Athena is a 30 kilowatt spectrum prototype laser system that can literally burn holes through aircraft and you wouldn't want to stand in front of this thing. It is a glimpse of the future and it shows the capability of energy directed weapons. These laser weapons are growing rapidly in prominence from small arms all the way to fighter aircraft. But lasers are not just used as weapons and there's some pretty unique applications for this type of technology. So without further ado, let's begin the top 7 countdown. Beginning at number 7 and lasers can be used as light commands. As we all know, consumers are buying more smart speakers and displays which detect voice commands. And technically they actually use wide field microphones. But there's actually one distinct flaw with these MEM microphones. And that is that they are highly sensitive to light. And they typically respond to a laser beam, otherwise known as a light command. By modulating the intensity of the light, the user can match the signal of their chosen voice command. So the next time you think that Alexa is actually haunted and making weird noises, well, it could just be your neighbor hacking your device remotely. Now, the intensity of the laser beam has to be pretty high if they're several hundred feet away. But regardless, I'm going to keep my devices away from my windows and doorways. And we carry on to another alarming device, which is called the Jetson. There is yet another system developed which can identify people. The Jetson system is essentially a laser which can measure a person's heartbeat, which is apparently almost as distinctive as other biometric indicators. It works by detecting minute movements around the chest area, and this can actually work up to 200 meters away. Now, the laser can actually work and collect readings through a shirt, but multiple layers of clothing can block the signal. Plus, it takes about 30 seconds to get a good accurate reading. We get to number 5 and it's the laser harp. There are quite a few laser harps out there, but one of the most impressive homemade builds is an adrenal based laser harp. Now, this works thanks to an oscillating mirror coinciding with a cycling laser. These cycles are happening 60 times a second, and in reality there is actually only one laser beam. Optical sensors detect when the laser is being disrupted, and the adrenal code is programmed to play a MIDI note at that time. Your mind is actually perceiving multiple strains during this whole process, and hence you can play a musical laser harp. It's a pretty complex project, so if you have any kind of appreciation for these types of builds, make sure to check out that link in my video description. We get to number 4 and it's called photoacoustic imaging. This is a relatively new method and it uses both lasers and ultrasound to reveal real-time imaging of molecular contrast. Using this technique, different features can be distinguished because of the molecule's light absorption. So for example, hemoglobin absorbs more light than the tissue around it, so you can tell the difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. You can also watch the effect of medications on different organs and how they respond. But my favorite feature about this new type of imaging is that it avoids utilizing radiation altogether, so you can use it repeatedly. It's a pretty cool scientific breakthrough, so make sure to check that out in my description as well. We get to number 3 and it's called optical levitation. Now there are several different ways to levitate an object, but there have been some recent developments in relation to optical levitation. One method uses a vacuum and laser beams to actually levitate nano diamonds. Sort of like using a pair of tweezers. Trapping the diamonds in a vacuum actually removes the effects of air molecules and thus there is full control over the diamonds. Taking it one step further, researchers demonstrated how to control the electron spin of the nano diamond, and this could help find applications in processing sensors and switches in the realm of quantum mechanics. So you never know, there could be a few more scientific breakthroughs when it comes to optical levitation. Now we kind of do full circle here in this video, and we get to number two, which is the vaporizer. And this is a laser which equates to 10 million billion watts, which is one tenth of the sun's power. Now a 10 kilowatt laser would literally burn a hole right through you, so why are we still alive on earth with this 10 petawatt laser firing off? Well, it's because it only lasts for a few femtoseconds, which is one quadrillionth of a second. So you're going to need a huge antimatter reactor in order to power this thing and actually make it last for a little bit. That would be an interesting calculation by the way. So it's not a Death Star weapon or anything like that, and the 10 petawatt laser is still useful since it can actually study extreme conditions unheard of on Earth. And it may even discover on how heavy metals are actually formed. Now we get to the mind-boggling number one, and it's a laser beam which can create negative mass properties. Now to me, this is one of the weirdest developments which has come out some time ago, and nothing really too much new has been revealed ever since. The University of Rochester developed a microcavity which confines light and creates particles with negative mass properties. 
These particles are inherently from the surrounding semiconductor, and then once they combine with photons, they create polaritons, which ultimately exhibit these weird negative mass properties. However, I just want to emphasize that these polaritons don't exhibit negative mass, they just have a change in energy state. So in the end, this is one weird experiment which may have been exaggerated, but it's still very intriguing research, and who knows what it could lead to. Now, I am a huge skeptic when it comes to these types of claims, but the theoretical implications of negative mass would be pretty huge, and it would be game-changing because obviously we can create anti-gravity crafts. But what is gravity in the first place is another story in another video. So once again, I want to hear what you think about all this. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.